When I came to the hospital that I work now, I came to work in the laboratory of immunology. In this laboratory, we do the test for hepatitis, for syphilis, for tuberculosis, for different infectious diseases. But it happened that it's the laboratory where they do also the ELISA test, the Western blood test, and the viral load test. When I started to do the, the ELISA test, it was seven years ago, it was something very funny that I saw there. I have been working in laboratory for the last 35 years or so, and I have been working with serological tests for syphilis, for hepatitis, for different infectious diseases. When I was going to do the, te the ELISA test for the first time, I found something very strange there, something very unique, is that I had to dilute the blood of the person 400, 400 times with a special diluent, and that's is very unique. That does not happen in any other human infectious condition at all. For instance, when you do the test for antibodies against syphilis, you check the neat, the straight blood. When you look for antibodies for hepatitis, you look in the straight, in the neat blood. Sometimes you dilute some samples. When you do look for some viruses, but you dilute one, 1 to 2, 1 to 10, never more than 1 to 15. But 1 to 400, that's something. So what I did in 1993 is that I called Abbott, the one, the company who commercialized and made the kit, to ask why. And nobody was able to give me a reason. No, it's because it was standardized in that way. So I called the National Institute of Health to the laboratory of Robert Gallo. And I asked them, because they were the ones who initiated the, the, the test. And they told me, no, the test was standardized in that way. But they were not able to explain me why. So for a while, I was thinking, why was that? And whenever I had the opportunity to work in a laboratory out, out of the hospital, in a different laboratory, in a private laboratory of a friend of mine, I asked him if I could do an experiment, and I did it. I, did, I started to do it in 93, some samples, but last summer I did a couple of more samples. I ran almost 100 samples. I ran the samples that came negative when I do the test in 1 to 400, according to Abbott, and that came negative. Then I ran all those samples without dilution. And you know what happened? Everybody came in positive. So I said, what? Hold on, what is this? So that means that everybody has antibodies against HIV? That means that everybody is infected with, a with the deadly virus? That means that everybody is going to get AIDS? I was really scary. <laughs> but I was m even more scary when I did something. I checked my own blood. <laughs> and I found that when I checked my blood, in 1 to 400, I came negative. But when I checked my blood straight, I am positive. So I haven't had the chance to continue the experiment, because we need some money. It's, uh, what we, we want to do is to do a really big trial, to use, for instance, blood from different kind of normal people, people on different ages, but who have not any anything. Obviously, that is very difficult. But to, to get a, a bunch of people from zero years to 90 with very little medical conditions, to get another group of people who have a lot of medical diseases, diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, anything that you want, and then to get a group of people who have AIDS-related diseases, and to check the blood of everybody with different dilutions to see what happened. Because what I suspect, or we suspect, is that according to the research that has been done by Eleni Papadopoulos and her group in Australia, and some other researchers, is that all what we are searching in this ELISA test is some kind of polyspecific antibodies that everybody has. That as, as more exposed you have been to different, to different antigens, higher the possibility to react positive. So with age, you have, as soon as you are getting older, you, your risk of becoming positive increases because you have been exposed to more things. If you have been living in a nice ambience, clean, fresh air, 
the risk of getting positive is lower. But if you live in the streets of New York, the risk is going to be higher. According to, or if you live in, in Africa or in Asia, we will go back to that soon. In the test for Western blood, they said that the ELISA test is not very specific because you are looking for a bunch of proteins, a bunch of antigens from the virus. But that the Western blood is better because you look for different bands, different proteins, different proteins of the virus. So that is more specific. But when you look that with, with care, carefully, you find something very interesting. Is that the proteins or the bands in the Western blood that are called P120, P means protein number 120, protein 65, protein 41, protein 31 or 32, protein 24, protein 17, and that numbers mean the weight of the protein, because there is a way of, a way of weighting them in the laboratory. According to the number of amino acids, according to the size of the protein, have different weights. But you find something very interesting when you search carefully, is that all these proteins can be normal cellular proteins or not even normal cellular proteins, is that those proteins are the result. They come from cells when the human cells are stressed for different reasons. They can release to the media, to the blood, these kind of proteins. Whenever you have those proteins in the blood, what happens with your immune system? The immune system produces antibodies against them. For instance, if you are working in a factory, and in the factory, you are working with a lot of chemicals. And you have to, and you, your lungs and your cells are a lot, very stressed. So you start to produce what is called the stress response. And during the stress response, you release a lot of these proteins to the bloodstream. And then your human immune system produces a lot of antibodies against each of them. And then when you do the ELISA test, the test is going to be positive. And when you do the Western blood test, the Western blood test is going to be positive. But not only if you work in a factory, for instance, if you, for any condition, you have a thyroid and you have a lot of medication for that thyroid for many years, it is the same. Or if you have a child of puberal condition and you have to use antibiotics for a long period of time, those antibiotics that you use for a long period of time are causing a stress to the cells. The cells respond with these proteins, and later, if you do the lysis and the Western blood, they're going to be positive. But not only that, if you are a normal female, me, women, woman, who lives in Africa, or in Asia, or in South America, or in the Caribbean, and happens to have two, three, four, or more, more children, as higher the number of children higher the stress response. Why? Because whenever a woman is pregnant, the immune system produces antibodies against the baby that is inside. Why? Because half of the baby is hers, the other half is her husband or her com companion, and the body doesn't recognize that half. So it produces some antibodies. So it produces, it produces some, excuse me, some some proteins like these ones. And that's why, as higher the number of kids a woman has, higher the possibility for her to become positive, posit positive in the test without being infected with anything. It's just because she was infected with her babies. But that doesn't mean any other thing.